This is part four of the game engine tutorial for new Blender users. It's, it's really powerful. Blender uses the bullet physics engine and it's just, uh, it's really nice. So what we're going to do in this lesson, we'll do a little review of the first three lessons and then we're going to do some significant additions to it as well. So I have a plane here and let's, I'm kind of looking at it from scratch so which comes up in Blender Render. I'll go back into the game engine here and I'll add, let's just say, a, a cube like this to the scene and I'll make it contrast with that, make it red like that. All right. So then we know we have to go over here to the physics tab and if we one of the ways to do it is to make it static or by default or dynamic which is how we have been doing it, but we're also going to use a rigid body. So we'll make this a rigid body as well this time. It still becomes an actor, but what rigid body does, it adds rotation to the object. All right. So this is just a plane that I'm looking at for the moment, but the reason I'm looking at that is so I can draw onto the screen just for a second so we can take a look at a lesson. So I come over here to the game logic first, what we have done before, and I'll have to control up arrow to get into this area so you can see it better. And we'll add some, we'll just review by adding keyboard sensors. We'll add um, these two keyboard sensors, and we'll do the left arrow and the right arrow and an AND controller and another AND well, we'll add an OR controller. No, yeah, let's add an OR controller. And you're gonna, what is that? Well, that's what we're gonna address in this lesson. And then we'll add a motion controller and another motion uh, motion controller down here. Let's see. So we'll notice we have other things available down in here as well. So, um, but we'll stick with this and this and this is because we have dynamic object settings instead of just uh, this allows us to control other things as far as just instead of just basic rotation and uh, location but this here and an or so really what this is this is these are logical things if you notice in the list you can choose from you have and or nand nor XOR, XNOR, and these other two up here we'll get to later. But we're going to cover these right here. And what these are, these are logic decisions. This is the way that a computer works. So before we actually set this up, well, well, we'll do something. We'll just give it a location. We'll just say, you know, negative 0.2 like we've done before, and 0.2 like this. We'll go back we'll verify that it actually still does work. So if I press P, hope you look at that, it bounces right off the surface. That's because it has the dyne that's because it has a rigid body effect set. So let's change this a little bit. Let's change this here and let's scale this up a little bit so it doesn't go out of the way. Then I'm gonna move this up so it's not sitting right on the surface, not interacting with the surface initially. And then when I run it, there it's sitting on the sur on the scene, but let's make sure we're in texture mode like this and then now when I press the arrow key there's the arrow key looking like that and then you notice the problem from before is see my orientation of my axis like this so there's X in a certain direction let's do this we better get another better add some more light to the scene we'll just increase the intensity of this one light just for the moment okay so we can see it a little bit better Okay, so when I press P, they're moving it back and forth. So it still does work like that. But notice what it does do if I move this object on Z up here and press P, now it comes down. And well, that's not a pretty good, good example for um, rigid body. Rigid body, well, if, if we take this cube and rotate it a little bit, so it's kind of skewed. Now let's run it, see what happens. Uh, that thing should be rotating. Doesn't like to rotate on a flat surface. Okay, we're going to change that. Rx, we we'll just change this a little bit. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here when it hits it. Okay, there you go. So that's what rigid body effects will do when it comes down like that. But the purpose of the lesson is that's one of the reasons for the lesson to show you about rigid bodies for rotation, but also these controllers. So I'll just go into solid mode for a second and use this as my back, background screen. 
I'm going to write a few things on the screen like this real quick. I'm just going to use the grease pencil. Alright, so in, um, where is the grease pencil? It's over here, draw. So basically a computer is not magical or mystical by any means. It's just electrical signals that are cruising along and the way the electrical signals come together, you can they essentially can form decision. They can make decisions, and you go, "Well, how is that even possible?" Well, I'll have a whole series of uh, books. In fact, I wrote a whole series of books on computer fundamentals, so you can understand all that. And I'll do a whole series of lessons on computer fundamentals to make it simple. But just to give you an idea, let's say you have, you know, you have a signal here and a signal here. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to do it each time. A signal here and a signal here. And then it comes into this box. I'm just going to make a box, this kind of generic looking box. We'll make it rounded a little bit like this. All right. And then we have a signal that comes out like this. And, and in computer terminology, we say we make these truth tables. And we're going to make an AND truth table. And this AND table is going to look like this. Let's see. I'm going to have that. Oh, I need to do that like this. There must be a way I can keep that going, huh? Draw free. Let's see what this thing says. No, draw. Let's see. So this is in. That's in. And this is out. That's out. <laughs> that says out. So when you have something like a 1 coming in here and a 1 coming in here, and if this is an AND gate here, I'm going to have to going to cursor the free hand. If I can remember how to draw a free hand on the computer, it's kind of hard with a mouse. That's an AND gate. All right. So an AND gate says if you have a, a 1 coming in and a 1 coming in, you get a 1 coming out. Because really it's saying if this and this are true, then that is true. So a 1 is equal to a positive or true, and a 0 is equal to false. So when So you make up this gate that says 1 and 1, and that means out comes 1. But it says if this is true and that is false, then this is false. So a 1 and a 0 is a 0, and this is for an AND gate. And then you also have if that's 0 and that's 1, then that's also a 0. And then the other condition for here is if this is a 0 in and a 0 in then it's a zero out like this. All right, so that's basically the way an AND gate works is that it's, and it's no different the way you think in life. You get, if, it's, if it's raining outside and I'm using my umbrella, I won't get wet. Or, you know, if it's raining outside and I forgot my umbrella, then I will get wet. You know, I mean, just kind of this kind of logic. So what these, and then an OR gate is the same, there's the AND gate and there's an OR gate and the OR gate says if this or that you know you might say um, if it's raining outside or if it's snowing outside I'll get wet All right either or condition or both conditions you know you would get wet but this would say you know if it's if it's raining outside and it's below freezing then it'll turn to ice you know, so you would use these kind of, and that's what computer logic does, and then they just turn these into voltages, one volt, or five volts and zero volts, and these go into transistors, and that's how the transistor can switch a state based on the voltage levels that come into here, and it'll change the voltage level coming out like that. And so then we go back and we have all these things really, uh, where's our scene? There it is right here. So, whoops, hang on, better go back to the other one. You get the other object. All right. So all these scenes, what they really represent, these controllers, they're just, they're like those gates, an AND gate, an OR gate, a NAND gate. So what we have is we have the AND gate and the OR gate, and then we have NAND, NOR, XOR, and XNOR. Well, we'll, give, we'll get to these a little bit later, but they have the same kind of logic type conditions except they're a little bit differently like for instance XOR says if one is true or the other is true then the output is true but it also specifies it's exclusively OR so it means if one is true 
what basically says both inputs cannot be true. Only one or the other can be true for the other result to happen. So let's see what a truth, the input condition in our case is going to be a key. Let's get rid of this. You can hold down the control key and get rid of that guy like that. And hold down this control key and get the, get rid of this guy like that. And I'm going to get rid of this one here for the moment and get rid of that one there. But now I'm going to use the left arrow key and instead I'm going to left click over here I'm going to press the control key. I'm going to press that left control key. So I have left control and left arrow and I'm putting it into, I'm going to put them both into an AND gate. Right? So now what this is really saying is says if the left arrow key is true, which means if it's pressed, and if the left control key is pressed, and it goes into the AND gate and it says AND, then do whatever's in here. So let's go, just go see if that actually works. So we'll go back and I'll start the simulation and I'm just going to press the left arrow key by itself. Nothing happens. I'm going to press the control key by itself. Nothing happens, but if I hold down the control key and the left arrow, then it moves. All right. So now let's escape that and go back into the window again. And then uh, let's make this uh, let's make this an XOR gate, which I was saying. Well, OR would be one. Well, we could do OR. We'll make it an OR gate to keep it simple. So this says, if this is true or this is true, then do that. So, so if the left control key is pressed or the left arrow key is pressed, do it. So let's press P. I'm going to press the left arrow key and it moves. And I'm going to press the control key and it moves, all right? So that's what an OR gate does, or this is why they're, these are called logic blocks, or that's actually not why they're called logic blocks, but this is what logic is in computer terminology. All right, and then let's just do one more because this is a powerful one. We'll use the XOR, all right? It means exclusive OR. So this says if this is true or this is true, but not both, then move it. So I should be able to press the left arrow and make it work and press the left control and make it work, but if both are pressed at the same time it should not work. Okay, so we'll go back to this. All right, so I'm pressing left arrow key and it moves. I press the control key and it moves. Now I'm holding the control and I'm going to press the left arrow and now I have them both pressed at the same time and it doesn't move. And that's what an exclusive OR uh, condition does there. So that's, that pretty much gives you an idea of what these controllers are all about, and they're powerful. So really just working with these five here, and, or, nand, nor, x, nor, x, or, x, or, and x, nor, and then later on we'll get into expressions and then full Python scripts as well. All right, well, so uh, if you haven't studied computer science, that can be a little bit tricky from the outset, but I think you probably got the hang of it. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.